What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Joey C here, back at it again with another one of them YouTube tutorial videos. You know how we do, and you know how we like to smash like buttons daily. Let's see if we can get 5 million likes this time, fellas, and don't forget to ring that bell while you're at it, too. I see your face, and I know what you're thinking. You're saying, this guy is a cartoon right now. How did you do that, Joey C? And you're in luck today, because that's exactly what I'm here to tell you right now. Hey everyone, so here we are in Blender 2.83, and the first thing we're going to do is just model a little head uh, to react to the audio that we have. So if you want to follow along to this, you should have a little piece of audio prepared for mine. It's just a, a little clip of me talking. So I'm just going to make something simple. So first, I'm going to add the default cube in, tab into edit mode. What I'm going to do is just grab uh, this bottom, move it up a little. This is going to be the top part of our head. I'm just going to duplicate that and then right click to put it back and extrude it down. This is going to be our lower jaw. And then I'm just going to add a few loop cuts like this and then bevel it like that. And then I'm also going to grab this face and duplicate that also. And I'm just going to scale that down. This is going to be our eye, one of our eyes anyway. I'm just going to scale that up. And I'm just going to extrude that outward like this. L to select the whole thing and then place it in like that. And then I'm going to duplicate that and just move it to the other side. Make it a little asymmetrical maybe like that. There you go. Then I'm going to add a few materials real quick. One is going to be our skin. I'm just going to make that. Actually, let's go into a uh, look dev right here. That way we can see. The color. Just gonna change this to a green color for the skin, something like that. I'm gonna make a second one for the eyes, just to have something a little different. I'll change that to black, and I'm gonna make the roughness 0.1, it's a little shinier. And I just have to select both of these with L, and then assign, and that's it. I'm also gonna add a bevel modifier just to get a little uh, definition on the the mouth. Add a few like that, a few segments, and that's it. Okay, so we're going to be using shape keys for this. And so that is over here in object data properties. And you just need to add one for the basis and then a second one. And this is going to be I'm just going to rename this mouth open. And then we actually go back into uh, edit mode here. And I'm just going to select right here the lower jaw and press O to go into proportional editing. Just want to come in and make sure this is set to uh, connected only. See if I move it without connected only, it's going to move the, the top part of the head too. So I'm just going to do that. And so I'm just going to move our mouth down a little. And you can use the scroll wheel to uh, change the influence. This is just going to be our like maximum mouth down like that. So that's like the maximum. And now if we come over here to value, you can see that's how you control the transition between the two states like that. All right, so now that we have this and we have our shape key, I'm just going to add an empty. And this is what's going to be controlled by our audio. So I just added this plane axis right here. And I'm going to open up our timeline right here. Press N to open this up. And I'm going to set a keyframe for the, uh, the Z axis right here. Just at frame one should be fine for this because we're not trying to loop anything this time. And then I'm going to press control tab on the timeline and it's going to switch it to the graph editor right here. Just make sure you select that first keyframe, go into key and then bake sound to F curve right there. Um, and then just find your, your audio clip. So I have mine on the desktop. And if you play it, you're not going to hear anything because you still need to add in the sound itself. So I'm going to go over to video sequencer, uh, add, Make sure you're on keyframe one, just so it doesn't place it in some weird spot. You can go to add sound. Once again, navigate to your sound. And it should just place it right there. So now if we play it, I am making noise. We can hear it, but we want to be able to like scrub through it too. So go back to your timeline right here under playback audio scrubbing right there. And for sync, I usually set it to frame dropping. And this usually helps make the audio match up with uh, what you're seeing real time. Sometimes it gets out of sync um, and it'll drop frames to like keep up with the audio. So now when we scrub like that, we can hear the audio. 
And I can see that our clip is about 280, so I'm just going to change this to 280. So when we play, I now we can see that this empty noise. is reacting to our audio. Bip, it just moves bip, up on the z-axis. And what we want to do is use this as a driver. And I'll show you why we didn't just do this to the jaw directly. So if we click on our head again, we want to right click on this value right here for our mouth open and add driver. And if the window disappears, you can just right click on that again and go to edit driver like that. You just want to select the empty here for object and X location. You can change that to Z location and world space should be fine also. And right, right here, I'm just going to delete this. So it's just using our variable. This is basically just looking directly at the, the Z location of the empty. So as we can see, I'm just going to scrub to our highest point right here. And it'll tell us this is 3.46. And if we look at the Z axis, uh, it's very similar. So the reason we didn't just uh, use the bake sound to F curve directly onto our head is because you can actually come in here pretty easily and just say like times three, and it'll just make it more severe like that. Or if you wanted it to be weaker, you can just like divide it like that. So now it's not as strong. But since we can see our highest points is right around 0.3, right around 0.33, it's basically a third of one or one third rather. Um, I'm actually just going to multiply this by three, and that's going to make our maximum value at like the loudest point. It's going to be like right around one, and it's okay if it goes a little past it. Um, and right here, you can actually clamp it. So if you want it to be able to go higher, you totally can like turn this up <laughs> to ten. And I'll just like show you uh, a little over the top. It gets pretty crazy. It basically just like overshoots. Am making noise. But obviously we don't want to do that. So I'm just going to change this back to 0.3. I am making noise. And that's all it really takes to get to this point. It doesn't really take that long to do what we just did. One thing to keep in mind is that this clip right here is just of my voice, but you know, usually in my tutorials you can hear like tapping and stuff like that. Definitely be wary of any kind of like background noises and stuff. You know, unless you isolate the voice, uh, you will have like a mouth reacting to other noises and stuff. And you know, you can keep that in mind too if you want to react to, like, maybe you wanted an animation to match, like, the sound of, like, you know, clacking on a keyboard or something. You could do that too instead of the mouth moving. So, yeah, definitely uh, approach this with an open mind because I'm sure there are, like, way more things you can do with this technique. And one thing to keep in mind also is if you go to render this out, like, as a video, well, if you render it out as a PNG, obviously the audio isn't going to attach, so you have to add that in uh, in post. But if you do want to render that as a video, you just have to make sure that uh, right here under audio codec, you switch this to you know something like AAC or MP3 so that it'll actually render with the audio. So this is pretty much all there is to it. My animation in the beginning was using a driver on a jawbone instead of a shape key, but the process is the same. I've only seen one other person use this technique, and even though it wasn't the inspiration for this particular video, I'd still like to shout out Dedus. I think that's how you pronounce it. It looks like they did the same thing to make their avatar in the corner of their video uh, bounce up and down to their voice. First, the version I use here is Blender 2.0. Check their channel out if you're interested in learning more about the grease pencil in Blender. Obviously, you're not always going to get the best results with this, but compared to real lip syncing, where you would have multiple mouth shapes to match the audio manually, this option is going to be way faster. You're just sacrificing quality for speed, basically. If you like this video and want to see more, consider subscribing. And if you follow this tutorial, Make sure to tag me on Instagram to show me your results. The links for everything are in the description. Thanks. See ya. You know how we do, and you know how we like to smash like buttons daily. Let's see if we can get some likes, fellas. I'm sorry, YouTube.